Welcome back to plasterer.org.uk Now today we're looking at plastering an arch Now plastering any arch can be quite difficult if you're going over a pre-existing shape I mean, You can buy different um, pre-formed arches to put into a square opening of all different uh, types, Indian type arch, Spanish arch to name just a couple but if you're going over an existing one, as I say, that can be fairly difficult anyway. If the one you're going over that the people want smooth is our text with a fairly rough pattern, which this one is, um, then that's a whole different ball game. So in this video, you're going to be seeing how I uh, bond and then set a nice edge to a, a march uh, freehand. Obviously, you can't get any kind of bead that will fit. Uh, an arch of this shape. So this is a technique that I use. As usual prior to uh, the bonding going on it's got a good neat coat of uh, PVA over the whole lot which I have allowed to dry so it's uh, dry to the touch. Uh, before we go any further uh, I can't lie to you this is quite a long video but if you're even going to attempt to uh, plaster over an archway like this you kind of need to see um, the actual strokes that are made with the trowel and the trowel techniques um, there's a couple of places where I've speeded up um, stuff that is fairly uh, repetitive but to see exactly what's going on in this one um, means it is a little bit long but um, depending what you're on this channel for if you want to uh, if you just like relaxing and watching someone else work then that's great um, if you're seriously thinking about doing this kind of thing and you haven't done it before uh, then then you'll need the video to be this length because if it is a bit rushed through you don't see the techniques that are used properly Now when you do get the opportunity to uh, buy a preformed arch, they generally come in four pieces. So you've basically got four quarters of the arch that you would normally fit into uh, some kind of square opening. You can get smaller ones for door openings, if people want those turned into arches. Uh, if it's a through lounge that's just got a square opening and the people would like an arch. As I said, you can buy so many different types of arches and you can look these up online. As I say these come in four parts and uh, you basically fix the mesh, the whole things have a wire mesh uh, framework to them. Um, proper uh, True Line is one of the brand names, um, preformed arches. They have the mesh that makes up the, uh, the structure but the bead that actually makes the edge of the arch, the corner, is a solid bead. If you buy True Line, you can buy cheaper ones. Actually, sometimes they're more expensive. And the edge bead of the arch is actually got a perforation in it because it's it is also like a mesh rather than being a solid curved bead. So it's a solid curved bead that you want if you're ever going to use um, a preformed archway. They say the four panels, you kind of fix them up, adjust them, get them nice and squared and leveled out, and then from there you. Uh, a bonding coat on sometimes a pricking up coat just to get a base that you can work to and then when that's gone solid you build up your archway from there anyway back to this one I've uh, bonded one side I think I'm about to pop to the other side of this one and uh, bond it the same again I think I have speeded up this part of the video uh, for your benefit because you don't need to see this bit um, twice or well, not slowly anyway there we go lovely if I could plaster this fast I'd be a millionaire okay now when I'm doing this uh, again my technique is to plaster both sides of the arch first and leave the actual curve right that's the uh, bonding done on both sides of the arch we'll let that set it's just about use the bag let those two sides set and that makes it, makes it a lot easier to put the curve in uh, freehand but that's coming up next okay the two sides are now fairly set so 
So we're going to put the internal part, the soffit, with the arch on. Now the technique here, when you're filling this part in, is to basically pop it in the middle and you pull it to the two sides outside so you've got a peak in the centre. As I say, you can use the toe of the trowels I'm doing here. Put one side on. And then if you repeat that process on the opposite side, you get that peak in the middle and then the point of that is you can then run your trout up and then back down to level that out so that pushes the gear to the outside edge as you go not quite there there you go and then you'll basically take your time and work your way up to the top. On the sides there, I was just scraping that little bit, little snots that go uh, off the edge. Again, you don't know if you can tell that well from the video, but um, it's still not, like the edges aren't fantastic, but um, they're as good as you're gonna get them at this stage. Uh, with your bonded coat. Again, as a lot of you guys probably know, if you're doing, when you get to a bit that's completely over your head like this, uh, just be careful because this stuff in your eyes, whether it's bonding or finish, you know, I think from experience I found finish is worse. Uh, if you get a big lump of that hit you in the eye before your eyelid shuts and then it shuts over the top, uh, you basically could get the equivalent of conjunctivitis for about a week with a just badly itching eye where the uh, quartz and the stuff in the gypsum basically just scratches your eye so when you're using any plaster above your head it's best if you can always do it to one side and never directly above your face um, I say that as I've been doing this forever this job and uh, not very long ago uh, but again I still went directly underneath it's not always a bit that falls off where you're putting it on either. Sometimes there's just a bit on the back of your trowel and as you whack it up there, that bit falls off the back of your trowel and uh, just if you're unlucky, it's going to hit you smack in the middle of the eye and uh, they say getting it out, so you can wash it out, which is what you need to do straight away, but it's, uh, it's not a lot of fun. Okay, so basically started that technique one end, gone across the top and now just working down the other left hand side of this archway same technique you can see it a bit better here where i've got a bit more of a close-up where you're making that peak in the middle by putting the two sides on and then dragging up and then well, you can also carefully go back down so you get those snots over the edge there and then they can be taken off and there i think we've got the uh, finished article so the two sides are set and that middle is too soft and we'll now be waiting for that to go off and I'm just tidying up some of the edges there with a palette knife okay guys we're on to the finished coat this yeah, more or less the same kind of system you'd use on the wall, apart from the fact half the wall is just not there because it's a hole. <laughs> okay, I tend to put on again, I'd come up highest to start with, then work my way down one side so I hit the floor with the skirting on that side, work my way across, and then it'll be down the other side. And then we go back to um, filling in that, that very small part we've got left at the top. If um, you're putting this finish on the same day as you put on the bonding, again, you don't need to put any PVA or anything on the, onto the bonding to kind of kill the suction. If, again, however, you're coming back to this the following day 
and it's and the bonding's really dried out you need to put a decent coat of PVA over the top and let that dry so that uh, you don't have problems with the skin coat going off like lightning um, especially when you're trying to form a nice edge on an archway like this Go coming down the right hand side now. If you carefully watch the technique, um, basically it's just a case of practicing, and obviously, the more experience you get over the weeks, months, years, um, the easier this kind of job becomes. I think the first job I did on an arch to try and get a decent corner on it I was wet in the corner and that ran in a plastic bag uh, along it which is quite a good um, technique if you get the hang of it you just got to be careful not to put your um, water on too soon or too late for that matter when you're trying to get a nice free hand edge where you've got no bead to work to Here, just trying to get that bond in as, as flat as you can um, with your trowel. I mean, some guys might, but I wouldn't tend to mess about with um, with a speed skim over something like this um, because you just got to really watch uh, that edge. And if you're not careful, you could um, kind of mess it up. Okay, so I tend to put the two sides on first and then put the centre on. This is all in one hit, no, I don't leave the, uh, the outsides of this to dry. I do with the bonding, but not with the finish. With the finish, you hit the whole thing. So you can, this is, in my opinion, is the best way to form a, a freehand edge to an archway. Because you can work the plaster from both sides and the soffit part of the arch itself. pleased to be able to be showing you this footage because um, I did this quite a while ago and uh, I thought I'd lost I'd lost quite a lot of footage which included this which I thought was a pity because um, it's something different from just doing a ceiling or a wall um, but I was fortunate enough to find it on another drive somewhere so, uh, so I was well pleased so that's why I've put this one together uh, for your, for your um, benefit and pleasure. Okay, so when I'm putting this on, I'm kind of going around the edge of the arch on both sides of the wall and up along the soffit as well, and on the opposite side of the wall there. So I'll catch that a bit before it hits the deck. be nearing the end of this video soon guys but as I say you need to um, it needs to be long for you to be able to watch the technique I've put up slightly over fast videos before where I've basically um, time lapsed the whole thing and uh, made comments kind of like <laughs> I couldn't see what you were doing it looked great but I uh, couldn't really pick up the technique so but we're nearly there now this is me um, flattening out with a second sort of top coat Again, 
tend to do the sides first and then hit that bit underneath just being like, careful of your edges really it'll be quite easy to accidentally um, wrap the edge of your trowel or your hook if you're not concentrating on what you're doing too bad now I'm putting some water on the edge here and using my filling knife cum scraper to just form a bit of a nicer edge to that arch need a fair bit of water to make sure that the two parts just blend in quite nicely then you take this all the way around don't over play with it otherwise you'll start to damage the, uh, the actual edge again and that's a very gentle um, pass over with that scraping knife I'm not putting any great pressure on it just very very gently to the side underneath keeping it keeping it wet otherwise if it starts to drag uh, badly and um, that will really mess up your edge okay, okay. we're coming near the end guys we're coming near the end Again, like with most plastering, it's thinking of what to do. Now here, the pinched index finger and thumb is a technique, you can't quite see it properly there, is what I'm using. So I've got water on that edge, and I've got my thumb and index finger pinched together, and I'm dragging that around the edge. Now, you can see that still looks quite rough there, but as this starts to dry, I'm going to continue with that, the troweling, and taking your finger and thumb around that edge and you just have to work as it at it as it um, as it dries out and then hopefully you'll end up with something similar to this if it's vaguely um, bitty anywhere slight little teeny little little things uh, you can just take a bit of sandpaper over that when it's properly dry or you can tell the client that it will need a very very fine sandpaper just gently taken around that edge um, to get a nice job before they do their mist coat and start painting there you go guys thanks again i really appreciate uh, you uh, liking the videos and uh, for subscribing to the channel um, it's just a uh, yes yeah, really great thanks for that uh, and i look forward once again to seeing you in the next one bye for now